Kids don't forget. Kids don't forget. You kids don't forget. Kids don't forget. Kids don't forget. Kids don't forget. <laughs> kids don't forget. 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 So, Jim, how are you today? I'm good, Khalid. I'm glad that you can make it. I am super glad I could make it as well. <laughs> so, Jim is such a... Jim is typically a nickname for James. Is that your real name? Yes, my name is James Craig, and I am the second. Okay, okay. Has, has your name ever been mispronounced in the history of your life? No. People pretty much, they get James or they get Jim. <laughs> Although I get called Steve a lot. You get called Steve a lot? Steve. How? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I must look like a Steve. Did you have any nicknames growing up? I did. I okay. Had, well, I had a couple. Like, you know, they called me Four Eyes, you know, because I wore glasses. Right. But my one family nickname that I had growing up um, was Jimmo. Jimmo. J-I-M-M-O. Okay. And I hated that name. Why? Well, first of all, it's not my nickname. It's not mine, right? So my grandfather's name is James. Okay. He's James Craig. That's why I'm James Craig the second. My cousin's name is James, but he's James Mont. So James Mont, Jim Mo. That's where the Jim Mo came from. It was my cousin's nickname. It was his name growing up. And when he got older, he didn't want to be called that anymore, so he was called Jim, just like my grandfather was called Jim. So I got called Jim Mo. I inherited my cousin's nickname. And like, what's wrong with that, right? And so they, my, my mom, my, my sisters, everybody, my dad, everybody called me that, and I just didn't like it. You know? Got it, got it, got so it. So when it. I went to school, I never told anybody that was my name until, you know, my sister showed up and then everybody found out. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of caught on even throughout the neighborhood. Yeah, I did officially retire a couple years ago, though. I went to a family reunion where my cousin, James Mont, was there, and I made the official announcement that I'm no longer having this nickname, and no one could call me that. <laughs> So speaking of which, where are you from? So I'm originally from Washington, D.C. Okay. I was born in Washington, D.C., but I grew up outside of Washington, D.C. in suburban Maryland, in Prince George's County. Okay, okay. So D.C. is like a hop, skip, and a jump right there. Right across the, or right across Southern Avenue, yeah. So we were a couple miles away from D.C. So you live in Maryland, but you probably are in D.C. all the time? Well, so uh, I was in D.C. for a couple of things. My mom worked right on Southern Avenue, right across the line in the city itself, and my mom took us downtown all the time when we were kids to the Smithsonian because they were free. Oh, cool, cool, yeah. cool. So you grew up in the museums. Yes. And you said your mom worked in D.C. She worked right on Southern Avenue, which is the D.C. line between Maryland and Washington, D.C. Really? Yeah. So oh, so one Avenue. side of the street is D.C. One side is, yes. And one side of the street is, is Maryland. Maryland. Correct. And it's like Western Avenue and is the same thing, and then Southern Avenue. So both sides of Washington, D.C., there is literally sitting on both sides of the street, but one's D.C. and the other one is Maryland. Okay. What did she do? She was a nurse. Really? Yes. Your mom was a nurse? My okay. Mom, my mom actually is still a nurse. Okay. She is a psychiatric nurse practitioner. So anytime you were sick, you were good. Yeah. She took, <laughs> she, she took good care of us. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, now, you say you grew up on, on the Maryland side of Correct. the... It's called the DMV, that whole area, right? Uh, uh, D.C., Maryland, uh, Virginia. Um. I guess it's got a couple of different nicknames. I left in 1986 or 87, 86. Okay. I left in 86, so I don't know what they've been calling it ever since then. Okay, got but it. But it was just like the tri-state area or like... Oh, you guys call it the tri-state well, area? Yeah, it's also, yeah, it's the tri-state area where like Maryland, D.C., and Virginia... Um, they, I think like the Council of Governments has names and stuff for it. Like, okay. It's called the National Capital Area or NCA. Oh, the National Capital Area. Okay. Because mm -hmm. in like Southern Jersey, Southeastern Pennsylvania, and Northern Delaware... That's called the tri-state area too, right? Right. right so right. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. But but we'll say it again. It's called the Northeast. Yeah. Well, the, like the national capital area. The national capital area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now you grew up on the Maryland side. I did. Where in Maryland? So I grew up in a town called Oxon Hill. Oxon Hill. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my neighborhood was named Birchwood City. Birchwood City. Mm -hmm. Okay. And across Livingston Road from Birchwood City was another incorporated town, actually called Forest Heights. Forest Heights. And that's where all my friends lived, and that's where I went to school. Okay, so you lived in Birchwood City, mm -hmm. but all your friends was in for were in Forest Heights. Mm -hmm. Now, you told me that, and correct me if I'm wrong, 
DC is separated into four sections? Correct, four quadrants. Four quadrants, North okay. Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, and Southwest. Okay, mm -hmm. so Oxon Hill is considered what? It's outside of Southeast Washington. It, it's closer to Southeast, but it's not too far from Southwest. Okay, right. how would you describe Birchwood City? Uh, Grow, growing up. Yeah, growing up. So my family moved there uh, in 1967. And at that time, it was a suburban, what you call a bedroom community for a lot of folks that probably had government jobs. So there was a lot of folks there that worked at, for the federal government, folks that um, were uh, mixed between white collar and blue collar. And um, there was a couple of different economic scales, if you will, you know, but it wasn't very wealthy. It was more like, you know, three bedroom, you know, single family homes. Middle class. Middle class. Very, very much middle class. And in my case, you know, a little below that. So. Okay. Now, your friends in Forest Heights, you said that most of those houses were like, or almost all of them were duplexes? Almost all of them were. We thought that was interesting when we were kids. We used to call them two-family houses. Okay. And it would be a house with two front doors. Right. And, a, and usually a fence down the front yard to separate the two, and then two different driveways. And okay. then there would be two or three stories high, and each one had one family that lived in each side of the house. And there was a common wall that went down the middle. So I think they're called twins. Okay, uh, right, a, right, not, right. Not a row home. It's just each house has two separate houses in it. So if you walked all the way around, mm -hmm. it, you would walk around two families' homes, Correct. not one. Correct. All the way around would be two families. Got yeah. it, got it, got it. And that was interesting to you guys as a kid because yeah. of what, how different it was than Birchwood? Yeah, Birchwood City didn't have any homes like that. It must have been built later. I think it was built later. So they were all single family. All single family So homes. your specific house growing up, you could walk all the way around it. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah. Got it. And one of your boys in, in, in Forest Heights, if you walked all the way around it, it could have been like two of your friends' houses. Right. Right. Because <laughs> some it. of the times they live next door to each other. Got yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, were you an only child? No. I have three siblings. Three. Okay. Were you the oldest, youngest, or in the middle? I'm the second oldest. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is the, the uh, age gap between you and the youngest? Uh, between me and the youngest is two and a half years. Okay, so if you're ten, I want you to imagine that you're ten years old okay. right now. Right. List out all your siblings okay. by age. Okay, so the oldest one, Kimberly, she's eleven and a half. Okay. I'm ten. My sister Deborah is, I'm ten, so she's seven and a half, going to be eight, and then my youngest sister Amy is going to be six and a half, going on seven. So you guys were. Mad close. We were close together. My mom had four kids in five and a half years. So we were very close together. Were you all in high school at the same time? Or did, did uh, Amy miss? That's a whole nother story. That's <laughs> but <laughs> we, went to, we all went to different high schools together. Okay. So Got it. We, we would have all been in high school at the same time. Like, so, yeah, so me and my two younger sisters were all one grade apart. Right. My That's old, what I'm saying. My right. older sister, though, was two grades ahead of me. Ahead so, of you. Okay. Yeah, so okay. we weren't one grade apart. We so, Amy, so Amy missed out. Basically, yeah. So, so, so Debbie was in ninth, you were in tenth, and Kim was in twelfth. Correct. Right, 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 right. So Amy was in eighth. So when she made it to high school, uh, Kim had graduated. Already graduated. Got correct. it, got it, got it. What was that like for you growing up in the house with with all girls? Uh, it was really good, actually. Really? Um, yeah. Being the only guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How so? Well, uh, it's an interesting story, I think. Um, so my dad had a very rough experience growing up. He was abused by his parents unfortunately. Um, and so, and he was an only son as well. He has two sisters. He had two sisters. Um, and uh, so... Um, what, is, what is abuse by his parents mean? It could mean a lot of it things. It was physical abuse. Physical. Yeah. Like it's just like bad. dad just beating the crap out yes. of him. Yes. Yeah, very bad. Um, and it's been cooperated by my family members, so it's like, it's not like a, a made up thing. But what that did was that scarred my dad, you know, emotionally and, and whatever. And so he... Um, he, he kind of doted on me as his only son, okay. to the, not to the exclusion of the girls, but sometimes to the exclusion of the girls, whereas my mom was much more even-handed about all four of us kids. So with my dad paying more attention to me when I was a, when I was a child, I, I felt special and I didn't understand why I was different and why would I get treated different than the girls. But when you're a little kid, you don't really know. Right. You know, you just don't know. And then as you get older, you start to look around and say, hey, uh, how come... I'm getting this and they're not getting that, you know, like, you but see by the time everything. you start, but the time you start really noticing consciously, you still remember all the stuff that happened back then. Like, yo, this has been going on my whole life. Right. 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 That's right. So, um, so that, so that part of growing up was, um, uh, that would be a little different as far as me and my sisters go. Okay. So okay. you guys like almost virtually grew up on top of each other. We did. Yeah. We, we lived in a three bedroom house 
and because there were four kids and then one boy and three girls, I had to have my own room. Right. And my sister, you know, Debbie, had her own room. And then in the basement, my dad built out bedrooms in the basement so that my oldest and sister and my youngest sister could be down there. Right. And my oldest sister could look after my youngest sister. That's huh. why they had bedrooms in the Interesting. Basement. So that's yeah. how your house was laid out. Mm -hmm. Wow. The middle girl had her own room. And the oldest and the youngest were in the basement. Yeah. Now, that's interesting. Yeah. I would love to talk to them to find out how that was. <laughs> uh, uh, it was an interesting dynamic growing up because um, the oldest and the youngest had, had brown hair, and the middle one had blonde hair. I used to have blonde hair when I, okay. had, when I had hair. And so the two middle, uh, two middle kids, my grandfather used to call us the gold dust twins because we were the two blondies, and then the older and younger were two brown hair girls. And so my oldest and youngest sister were very, very close growing up, okay. sometimes to the exclusion of my middle sister. Okay, so, okay. So based on the conversation so far, it appears that you grew up with both parents. Yes, okay. up and, to a point. Okay, well, uh, uh, up until when? Up until I was age 15. Until you was 15. Okay, so before we get to that, um, what was your relationship like with each of them? So you can start with your mom or your dad. So as I was explaining about my dad with him doting on me. What's your dad's name, by the uh, way? My dad's name is Jack. Jack. Shout out to Jack. Okay. Right. Um, he, he, was, he is, he's still alive. He, he's, um, he, he is in a highly intelligent, highly intelligent, um, self-educated person. He's never had any formal education beyond high school and trade school. So all his le learning has come from books, reading books. He was an avid reader. What was his trade? His trade was automotive machinist. So he would literally build automotive engines from the engine block up. Okay. Well, you know, he would he get all the parts, and then he would do all the machine milling that he had to do to get the pistons to fit in the cylinders and the valves to fit in the valve guides and the heads and everything and milling all the surfaces. And so he knows how to build cars. He knows how to build engines, and he and he can also work on cars. He's a good mechanic too. Okay. You know? Okay. So a mechanic works on the whole car. A machinist works on the engine. Got it. Got it. Right. Interesting. Yep. Okay. So back in those days, people used to rebuild their engines. So my dad did that as a trade, and um, why and, would somebody rebuild an engine? Oh, because a, when a car got to a hundred thousand miles back in the old days, the engine would die. Would blow up on you basically. It wouldn't blow up. I mean, it would just it would just die. It would so you either up. had to buy a new car or, or get the engine get rebuilt. the engine rebuilt for far less than the cost of a brand new car. Ah, Much so cheaper. knowing how to rebuild an engine was a, a good skill mm -hmm. to have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and people would, people could afford to rebuild their engines versus trying to buy a new car. Right. 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 So it was an economic an economically viable uh, option. Um, so my relationship with my dad growing up was again because he he kind of doted on me. It, it was it, I always felt special, and he did a lot of stuff with me. So because of that, I felt very close to my dad. I, I, I had him up on a pedestal. I admired him. He was my hero. He was like the guy who, who could fix anything. And he literally pretty much could fix anything. So if you need to make something out of tools with your hands, he could do it. And that was the thing about being a machinist is that he could create just about anything out of metal or wood. He could make it. If it didn't exist, he would make it. He has tools that he's made that didn't exist before he made them. So I always thought that was really amazing, right, um, that he could make stuff. So I had a good relationship with him up until I was a teenager. Okay, got um, it, got it. With my mom, my mom's been consistent every day of my life since the earliest I can remember. And what was your mom's name again? My mom's name is Kathy. Kathy. Shout out to Miss Kathy. Yeah. Kathy with is two types of Kathy's, with a K or a C. She's a Kathy with a K. She's a K Kathy, okay. She is, <laughs> she is, yep. And, uh, and like I said, she's, and so she was a registered nurse um, all my years growing up. She graduated from nursing school in Wilmington, Delaware, not too long before I was born. And then um, she's been working as a nurse ever since. But like Is that said, where she's from? Is she from Wilmington? No, she was born in New York City. Really? And she grew up in southern rural Maryland, way down the eastern shore. Okay. Where's your dad from, by the way? He was born in Newark, New Jersey. Okay. And he actually grew up in western North Carolina. Okay. In the, in the hills. Do you know how they met? <laughs> yes, I do know how they met. Okay. Uh, my dad was uh, detained at St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Washington, D.C., which, as you know, was where John Hinckley is, at the mental hospital. Right. He was there uh, due to some uh, court issues. Okay. And my mom was working as a nurse there on one of her rotations when she graduated from nursing school. Ah, That's okay. Interesting. Know. Yeah. I know they have an interesting story. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> So your relationship with Miss Kathy? Yeah, so my mom has been like my hero my whole entire life. She was, um, and she is, the most amazing person, just uh, a loving, giving, caring person who cared for all four of us. And it's important to realize that when my mom was raising all four of us kids, my dad, even though he had a trade and, and often had a job, he often did not have a job. 
okay. he, he would bounce around from place to place. And so he never really worked one place for very long consistently. But my mom had uh, a husband, a mortgage, and four children she had to care for. So she worked steady, constant, all the time. That was She had to keep a roof over our head and food on the table. So that's what my mom did. She provided for us. So your mom was basically the breadwinner of the family. In every way you can think of. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, back to your dad for a second. Sure. You said he was an outdoorsman. Yes. What does that mean, and what, what did you learn? Yeah. Oh, so he taught me a lot of stuff, Khalid. He was an, an avid outdoorsman. He loved to hunt. He liked to fish. He liked to um, do things outside, like, you know, go take the four-wheeler and go climbing up mountains, you know, the four-wheel drive Jeep and go up the mountains okay. and explore things. Um, he liked to hunt a lot. He did a lot of deer hunting when, he, when I was a kid, so he took me sometimes with him to go deer hunting. That was fun. Okay. But I'm more like the being out in the woods early in the morning and just listening to the woods than I did the hunting part. I really wasn't okay. I wasn't that good at it because I'm nearsighted, okay. so I couldn't see very well. So there was that issue. Okay. Um, but he, he loved the outdoors, and he gave me an incredible love of the outdoors, please. So I did get that from my dad. So you guys did hunting. You did fishing. Mm -hmm. You've done all that. I have. Okay. What do you prefer? Uh... Between the two of those, <laughs> I prefer hiking and just being outside. So like, you like, like the hiking mountain climbing, aspect of hiking, it. Yeah, canoeing, okay. caving. Like I like outdoor stuff, but I've done a lot of canoeing. I've done a lot of backpacking. I've done a lot of caving. I've done a lot of other stuff that's not really hunting and fishing. It's more like just outdoors. Okay. M uh, mountain bike riding. And lastly, about your dad, you said he was a competitive shooter. Yes. Yes, he so was. He did teach you how to how to how to shoot. He did. He taught all four of us kids how to shoot. Okay. Really. Um, so he so he did take how, all four how of us. early. Early, like I remember being about four years old. Really, maybe five. Learning okay. how to shoot with my dad out in the um, woods. Yeah, so he'd have a twenty-two caliber rifle, mm -hmm. which is the smallest caliber rifle you can pretty much have. Okay. Um, and he would take us out to a safe place, and we would go over all the safety rules, and then we'd set up cans or bottles to and. That's called plinking, where you get to shoot a target that moves when you hit it. Okay. That's kind of fun. And then there were paper targets, which to a kid is not as much fun because you're putting holes in paper. Um, you don't <laughs> right, really get the right, idea right, of like right. you know having a, a group or anything. But um, but we all learned how to shoot as as children, and we also learned all about firearm safety at the same time. Right? Now your mom being a nurse, how does she feel about her kids shooting guns? I don't know that my mom was ever supportive. Like like she never came with us. As far as I know, I don't remember mom ever being there, but she never said anything against it. Okay. So I don't I don't know how my mom feels about it. I should ask her. <laughs> <laughs> now, you became a parent? I did. How many beautiful uh, blessings do you have? I have three beautiful children of my own, and I have one stepdaughter. What are their age ranges? So my son is 32. Okay. My daughter is 29. Okay. My youngest daughter is 26. Okay. And one month... Older than her is my stepdaughter, who's also 26. So they're not that far, like, far apart in age, six years between, between the bookends. The, yeah, that's right. Three years each, between each one of them, and they're all six years, six okay. years total. Yep. So with that being said, they kind of grew up in the cluster the same way you grew up. A little bit, yeah. I'm curious. What are some similarities and differences between your parents' parenting styles? You know how your parents raised you because... You were there. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. What were some similarities and differences between your parenting style and your parents? So.